Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com and in this tutorial we're going to create an Android virtual device so that we can then go on and run our first program. So um, I'm going to go to Window and AVD Manager, that's Android Virtual Device Manager and I'm going to click New to create a new Android virtual device. So uh, we're actually going to create a new emulator and we're going to be able to run our code in that emulator. Now actually I should point out that since the last tutorial I've uh, installed a few more Android SDK versions via this SDK manager and when you, um, when you actually create your application you have to think about what version of Android to target it to. Um, you don't necessarily want to target it for the latest version of Android because most people won't have that. So if you do that, you're going to really limit the market for your application. And if you go to um, Google and you search for um, Android um, platform versions uh, and go to this link on developer.android.com, then um, you can see here a breakdown of um, how many people are using which uh, or what percentage of people are using which version of Android at any given time and each version comes with a version number like 2.3 or 4.0 but it also comes with an API level and uh, the API level is kind of just a convenient number to work with to tell you what version of the Android SDK you're, um, you're working with. Now um, uh, the kind of rule of thumb from developer.android.com is that um, it's a good idea to target your application for 90% of users um, and I think for for this for the purposes of this tutorial I'm actually going to target um, API level maybe 9 or 10 because um, if you look at how many people on this chart are using the gingerbread version of Android it's like um, a majority of people um, are able to run applications targeted at API level 9 or 10 and um, there aren't that many people using an API level below that. So um, I, I figure that's a good compromise and I'm going to go back to Eclipse now. So I installed like um, using this uh, SDK manager I installed uh, like API level 10 uh, SDKs or um, an SDK for API level 10 and now I can create an emulator for that API level. So just to repeat, the API level is really just a number that corresponds to an Android version and we want to target a slightly older version rather than the absolute latest one um, in order to in order so that more people can run our application. So um, having said all that, I'm now going to go to the um, to the AVD manager and I'm going to click new and I'm going to select a target in here and I've got all these different targets because I installed all those different um, SDKs as I just explained and I'm going to select, let's try um, this Google API's API level 10 emulator and I'll, um, so it's, I'm going to select like widescreen 800 pixel resolution so it's going to have a width or a height depending on how you look at it of 800 pixels and let's just call this uh, 800 10 um, to keep help me keep track of um, what this emulate, emulator is and I'll give it here you can specify the size of a micro SD card which you can insert in your phone to provide uh, memory for um, files and let's, let's set this to one gigabyte um, so that we pretty much definitely should run out of space for the purposes of testing and I'll leave everything else as it is and I'll click create Android virtual device here. So we've created the device and now I'm going to click start and when you click start let's see I'm going to click wipe user data here um, and that will probably remain check remain checked every time um, because I want to every time I restart this device I'd like to just wipe all data off it and I'll click launch. If you click scale display to real size then um, at least on my laptop the devices tend to look really minuscule because um, this is quite a big 
screen for a laptop um, that you're looking at right now on this video and uh, 800 pixels is like nothing so it's like a matchbox so I won't tick that and I'll click launch and this initial screen doesn't take long and once this is finished you can close these dialogues but what does take a long time is booting this emulator so I'm just going to get rid of this and uh, Android as I understand it is um, is built on Linux the Linux operating system and uh, Linux of course takes a while to boot and Android in an emula emulator like this takes uh, a hell of a long time to boot it could easily be 10 minutes but the good news is that you don't need to keep rebooting it every time you recompile your program you can just boot this emulator and run it and um, then you can keep redeploying your application to this one emulator and it often it is a bit buggy and you might need to restart it you might need to restart Eclipse even or to do things like going to projects and cleaning your project to clear out the class files and rebuilding them and uh, in extreme circumstances sometimes to get this to work after it's stopped working I've had to um, actually restart my computer but um, it's it's hopefully worthwhile you need a little bit of patience but um, nothing takes quite as long as this initial boot so I'm going to go away now and um, come back in just a minute when this has made more progress okay so um, like um, just a minute or two minutes has passed now and the device is actually booted already as you can see which is a pleasant surprise for me because it can take really a long time I did also install from the um, from the uh, SDK manager the um, x86 accelerator and I don't know if that makes a difference or not I installed this Intel x86 emulator accelerator maybe that speeded it up um, compared to my previous experience or not but you can always install it and um, see if it helps now in the, in the next tutorial we're going to build a hello world application and uh, I'm going to use this emulator to do it and there's just one more thing I want to say about emulators which is that um, often when they boot the screen is initially locked and you might need to unlock the screen just by pretend their mouse is your finger and unlock it as you would a phone by dragging the lock out the circle or whatever but with this emulator it appears to be unlocked as it is so it's fine okay so um, in the next tutorial we'll build a hello world program and until then happy coding